Welcome. I'm Lamore Schaffman for TIA Now at the special edition. I'm director here at TIA for content development. And joining me today are two gentlemen from Global Actionable Innovation Venture Capital Program. Global Actionable Innovation is an organization that brings together companies who want to scale their businesses together with uh, large corporations, global corporations, who are seeking to bring disruptive, innovative technologies and solutions into their fold. With me are Isa Chini. He is Chief Business Development and Strategy Officer for Channel Vas. And also who we have with us, Bruno Maliado, CEO of Myrex. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good thank morning. You. Good, morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to have you. So please jo just start us off with, can you tell us um, what your companies do and what made you so compelling that global innovation, actionable innovation brought you in and made you part of the program? And why don't we start with you, Lisa? Thank you. Good morning again, and the pleasure to be here. So ChannelVest is a software analytics company. We play a, a critical role in the value-added services uh, departments of mobile operators and service providers across the globe. What we do basically is we help operators and uh, mobile uh, network operators in particular to monetize on their value-added services, where their assets are sitting and uh, can be uh, explored in a multi-dimensional way and in different verticals as we're here to tell you about these verticals, particularly the financing area, as well as the advertising area. And I'm happy to share with you some use cases in okay. a minute. OK, great. Bono? Good morning. Uh, Myrex is the first social creation platform. Uh, we're based in Brazil, but we are scaling globally now. Uh, what we do is, our mantra is commerce led by people. So what we bring to the, to the, to the business is, is a social creation tool that anyone can recommend products and contacts, for example, movies. Uh, if I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know which movies I want to, to rent, I ask a friend for recommendations. Uh, this friend recommends and I decide to rent this movie. Uh, we see this dynamic in a different angle. We think that when this scenario happens, the recommender is responsible for the sale and the store is the delivery channel. So we build a social creation platform that monetizes with a virtual coin called Rec Points. Each recommendation that turn into a sale, and we bring the user, the crowdsourcing, to curate the, the contents in the telco or in the e-commerce stores. Okay, wonderful. And so I'll start with you. So in order for telcos to take advantage of this, it's actually allowing them to bring in, they already have the content. Yep. You're bringing in this tool that allows them to reach out into the community, gather and bring a social media component into the sales that they're already generating. Is e that correct? Exactly. We, we connect any content that the talk has, movie, apps, music, games, in a social creation platform that the user that is recommending uh, it's getting into the store with this picture from, from Facebook. It's basically a Facebook application and also connect with their social media with these recommendations. And all the recommendations that turn into sales or generate value for the telco, we monetize them with red points that they can use in the telco for airtime or prepaid credit cards or another contents that they want to, to buy. So with this virtual coin, we close the marketing cycle of the social creation. Okay, and how do we make sure that those who are being curate, who are the curators, are actually not just saying, "Oh, wow, this is a great application. This is a great movie. You gotta get it." And I just want to get the points, like, because you know, people are gonna gamify the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you watch out for that? Yeah, we we, we put a gamification technology together. So we have uh, we have two filters. One is the social filter. So your your friends uh, like what you recommend. So you you get some kind of. Uh, behavior to, to recommend what you really like. This is a social filter. The other one is the gamification. We add some badges uh, with specialties in, 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 in gamification of the, the system. So we, we know which people are doing the right recommendations with the right sales. So we have this social filter that is from friends, and the, the platform has some uh, uh, gamification filter too. Okay. One. So Isa, now describe a little bit more about what you're doing because you have a very interesting solution which is really taking advantage of some big data and, and making it very useful for a telco. So you could describe that to us. Sure. So um, we, we have found a niche uh, place where we play and in profiling uh, customers of uh, service providers. And by doing this, we found out that the untapped market today, it's around microfinancing where we provide micro loans to, uh, to end subscribers who really want to benefit from the fact that they ran out of shortage of cash to do an airtime transaction and in the future to get a small loan to do any other 
transactions such as to pay for their handsets or to pay for their micro insurance in case they're insuring that handsets. So that's one vertical where we said to ourselves, how can we help the MNOs tap into other verticals today while their voice and data is jeopardized by the over-the-top players of the world. And we still go back to the basics of whatever we do. So the basics for us is how can we go to the MNO, tell them you did not lose the game today, don't be only a pipe for um, just data. Why don't you differentiate yourself? So that's one area where we help them in the microfinancing or micro loan. And the, the possibilities around that is, uh, is extensive. So, and I want to make sure that I'm really clear. So you're able to use data that you capture about different users and how they're using the phone, and you're able to assess whether or not they can actually qualify for a short loan for a short period of time, and you're able to make that, and they, this will all happen through the telco system? Explain that a little bit more, because I think that's quite an extension of their offering that I never would have thought of for them. Great point. So what we do is, uh, based on your behavior as a subscriber, the way you pay your bills, the way uh, for how many years have you been with the telco, do you uh, have your whole family with that uh, MNO as well? So based on your behavior as well as on your profile, we will uh, be able to qualify of how much you are able to tap in terms of financing. And the way we get it back is always uh, by sharing with the MNOs uh, a, a share that will help them to increase their revenues. So we're very transparent also of the way we lend money and we get uh, money in return. And today, yes, we do it for the end type market, but we, we see great potential to do it in any market today where small microfinancing activities will be a, a clear gain to, uh, to many operators. Now, the other area where uh, I did not have uh, yet uh, enough time to share with you, but the advertising piece. So, we, we still believe in the mobile advertising. And um, we, uh, we come from a fact that we need to share with the end subscribers also a wealth of the advertising uh, elements. And what I mean by this, if I am party A and I'm calling Bruno, who's party B, I will hear an advertising ringtone instead of Bruno's normal ringtone. So Bruno is qualified and subscribed to the service. I hear his advertising. The normal average call is 11 seconds. I can participate to, add the, advert, to the ad, and, I, and Bruno will get some share in return. So we're trying to also specify how we change the impressions of mobile advertising piece. And the, the ecosystem is helping us a lot where the mobile operators want to increase their footprint in some areas such as advertising. I hope I'm clear. Otherwise, please feel free yes. to ask me. Yes. So I, I, let's, uh, let's clarify that for a second. So let's say um, you know that, uh, or we know actually through big data, a number of ways, either through calls or through other your social media or things like that, that you're interested, for example, in buying a car. That's correct. And so when you're calling Bruno, Bruno has signed up for this service. And when he, and when you, when you, it knows that when you're calling Bruno, the ringtone you're going to get is specific because you're going to, so from a car dealership of some sort. Whereas if I was going to look for an airplane that I want to buy, I'd be getting, you signed up, I was calling Bruno, I would get an airplane, some kind of special pilot training program. Is that correct? That's totally correct. So we, we are really personalizing the marketing messages that you get from this service. So we don't want to also bombard you with elements of uh, nonsense uh, marketing. And we do this by profiling the caller ID based again on the people he calls a day or she calls a day, by the behavior where they live, by the browsing history that they're doing on their mobile phone in order also to uh, segment the advertising piece to the need of the, uh, and by this the return on investment of the brands will become also more substantial. So it sounds like both of you are very much taking advantage of um, big data and this capture of a lot of information that we're getting from the customers. And you're able to repurpose it for the telcos. So why do the telcos need you? I mean, why aren't they doing this themselves? What are the issues that the telcos are faced with today that they need to turn to companies such as yours in order to uh, have some kind of new services that maybe they aren't able to create themselves? What do you think is going on? Okay. Uh, in our case, we, we we have been operating with different verticals uh, in e-commerce and in telcos. Uh, what we have learned is, uh, when you look for the telco for an e-commerce operation, uh, you have just a classic business to consumer message. What we add to the to the telco and e-commerce is a C2C consumer to consumer uh, message. So. 
all the, the process is led by crowdsourcing. Uh, this uh, operation has bringing a, a, a conversion rate two to three times better than the, the average of the store, the conversion rate in terms of orders. Mm -hmm. So the, the, what it means, when someone is going to the content page uh, from a personal recommendation, from a human curation, it has two to three times better chance to convert in an order. That's the results that we have, we have learned from, from the market. Which is huge for the telcos. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. The telcos know more than we do that the pressure is augmenting day after day. And they have to look for a new ecosystem of partners to help them assess what they can do better for their end subscribers. And this is where the area we, we play. And the disruption comes from the fact that you have an existing business you have an existing business, how can we help you um, um, access a little bit deeper information about your end subscribers while you're doing a 5G expansion and other network improvement? Give us the, the areas where we can uh, help you uh, know more about your subscribers in details. And you own the data. Let's go back to the basics. You have tons of data. Why don't we uh, cooperate and partner of accessing this data and having a, a wealth of experience from a user experience, but also from increasing your revenue uh, on, on the top line. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure.